guys, welcome to another layout. This one is my first one for my 2023 series of monochromatic layouts. I am challenging myself to use, sorry, I'm turning a piece of paper if you can hear that noise. I didn't open my book. Now I am using papers from collections gone by, ones that I've had forever. This particular monochromatic layout is using green. So I've actually pulled out the DCWV Botanic Beauty Premium Stack. Now this paper pad I've had for quite some time, I got it from Spotlight. Any of my Aussie viewers will know, they may have seen it, you may even have it yourself. This is a way of using this particular set this is where I realized I cut into the dark green without thinking about it, but it's okay. Don't worry. I fix it. It's all good. So what I've decided to do is pull out a heap of monochromatic things. This is something that I'll be doing weekly throughout the year. I don't know how long I'll go for. I might run out of colors. <laughs> you might want me to redo a color. I don't know. Um, basically and I'm also joining in with um, a hop as well so later in the month you'll notice that I have another one ready to go so once a month we're doing a monochromatic hop with crazy craft obsessions so now you're gonna see me do a little bit of fussy cutting now this is really boring but I left it in and I did speed it right up because I wanted you to see what scissors I'm using and how easy it is to, and it's not really working because you can't see it because I'm out of the shot. <sighs> I'm sorry, people. I still make rookie mistakes and that's one. Look at that. You can't even see my hands. So I'm just having a play. I'm just trimming out some leaves and stuff. So the point of having the monochromatic layout is, in my opinion, I want to use anything and everything that is pretty much the color that I've chosen. So for example, if you have a look at this, towards the end of the video, I show you how I color correct a couple of things. That way you too can create monochromatic layouts. It doesn't necessarily mean this particular photo that I'm, I'm using, um, that was a picture of my husband and I, and we went, I don't know, we weren't at the movies, but we went somewhere together. Maybe, I don't remember where we went. But it's just one of those photos, and I try wherever I can to take a photo of my husband and I, because for years, I have been the person going, oh, I don't like myself on camera, don't take a photo of me. And this is going to sound a little bit, I'm just going to go in a little bit of a dark area for a second. Um, one of my very, very good girlfriends, she lost her daughter and she was 20, 20 something, 20, how old was Jess? I don't know. I can't remember exactly her age. I think it was like 22, 20, 22, 23. Oh, I'm not sure, but I know it was over 10 years ago. Um, very sad. Now, what I learned from that situation was this. You don't get the opportunity to take photos of experiences and of loved ones after the fact. Hindsight's wonderful. I wish I had, fill in the blank. That's a wonderful thing to realize after the fact. Unfortunately, I have a big chunk there where I took photos of my children, took photos of my husband, took photos of experiences, and I wasn't in any of them. And that, and losing Jess really opened me up to going, whoa, fat or not, your kids are going to want those photos. Because at the end of the day, that's the mum they know. That is just the season of life you were in. It just is what it is. And hence, I take photos like this now because that's why and that is why I scrapped them because at the end of the day my kids are going to want that and my kids love my scrapbooking they love my um two of my kids 
are not create are not paper creative but they love checking it out they love touching it they love feeling you know when I create texture and all that sort of thing Jen is my creative one she's one that will most likely want to inherit my amazing room that's you know down the track but yeah so I look I just wanted to sort of explain to you why I take those photos why do you take photos what do you take photos of are you of the Instagram era where if it's not if you don't take a photo did it really happen like are you that sort of person or are you the kind of person that takes a photo and then afterwards edits that photo as much as humanly possible so it's what you want or do you just take photos just for the sake of it and go At the end of the day I've got the photos and so what like I'll be honest with you I love photography okay this one I used my Cricut now I have to remember to do this with a lighter hand I do it I always push so hard I don't know why I do that all I'm doing here is I want to add a little bit of ink to the page so I've just grabbed the outside edge of my offset that I created with my Cricut all I did was typed in two words that I liked these photos this particular photo reminds me that we're growing together we are we're growing we were see I traced it now I have to rub most of it out because I did it way too heavy I only need a faint line <laughs> I don't know why I do that so I wanted to create now obviously the paper's already green right I pulled out my oxide and then I realized no 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 I want ink the reason I went with distress ink instead of oxide is because distress ink is transparent okay you can put it down as much as you want but it is going to be transparent you're going to be able to see through it and that's what I wanted I didn't want to block out the green underneath I wanted to add a bit more green sort of try and add a bit more interest to the page even though it has a pattern on it and it's already got some green on there I wanted to just add a little bit more so I'm using distress ink and I'm using shabby shutters I think that's the one that I used yes shabby shutters and rustic wilderness that's what I use with the distress inks now I did pull out mode lawn but I thought that's a bit too bright for what I'm going for now this is where I go right start placing things down so you can start building this up now there was a little bit of white that I really couldn't cut out very easily so I just ran over it with my green brush and just greened it up a little bit and that works a treat now these little orchid things they are they actually have a slight lime color to them they're not white they're not completely white now this is where I realized I probably should have put my distress inks on my title so that I could go ahead and let it dry and then I could put it all together I ended up using rustic wilderness and pine needles now they're two colors that I don't use very often well rustic wilderness because I've only just got it it was literally my lucky last distress oxide to come into my range and I love that color it's so nice I will use it so much especially considering my kids go to a high school that is green now I so for the inside words I pulled mowed lawn no it was shabby shutters and I apologize for my dog barking Amazon just delivered something Lexi Lexi it's okay so Lex come here it's all right she doesn't like the Amazon delivery guy I don't know why she likes the post the post guy the Australia post fella loves him he's not a problem but the I think because the Amazon delivery guy just like chucks it over the fence whereas the Australia Post guy talks to them so yeah that's eh, all good so I went over the top of this with shabby shutters I thought I went over it with mowed lawn I've now checked my notes and I actually went over it with shabby shutters 
because it's with the green, it's reflecting the green. So that's all the greens. Apologies for my dog. It's because the kids are still playing with the front door. So Lex, I apologize. I'm so sorry. She has to be with me 24 seven. Do you own a pet? What sort of pet do you own? I have four dogs. I'll be honest with you, there's four dogs. One of them is my daughter's dog and that's Gizmo, but the others are mine. And um, yeah, Lexi's always got to be with me, but that's when that happens. And when I'm doing voiceovers, it really doesn't work because she sits and she, she does this thing. This is what she's doing at the moment. She's like chuffing, like she's not barking, but she's just, just letting me know someone's at the front door, mum. I know it's someone at the front door. It's one of my children getting an order. Okay, it's all good. Now, what am I doing? Back on task. Let's hope the dog stops. So I'm just adding my title. I can still see very, very lightly where I sort of traced this before. So that's why I'm not needing a ruler because I know what I'm doing. And this one, I ended up lifting up the word together. So it kind of sits over the top of growing a little, uh, just ever so slightly. And I think that looks really cool. And yes. So what else am I going to tell you? What am I doing? I have got, um, so this layout will be going up on Wednesday. I have another design team layout coming out on Friday. I, if you're new to my channel, hi, how are you going? I'm Karen from Queensland, Australia, and I create at least six videos a week, sometimes seven, um, sometimes even more. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you stick around for a little bit, feel free, like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know if there's something you would do differently, let me know if there's something you want me to try. Now that's something that no one's asked for anything recently. I think it's been, yeah, it's been a bit quiet on that front, but I did release a video yesterday and it was me playing with some mixed media. I've had several people, more than several, at least about, I would have to say, if I'm thinking off the top of my head, at least 15, maybe more that have asked me, they don't do mixed media, they've never done mixed media, and they're not, they're not confident, they're not sure about it. So I had a little bit of a play, so you guys can see what I do with the different color mediums that I have, and why I chose those color mediums. For example, I've chosen to buy the Distress Inks, the Distress Oxides, and the Distress Watercolors. The reason I did that is because the watercolor pencils, sorry. Um, the reason I did that is because all the color, all the colors come from the same color palette. Therefore I can mix them together and I know they're going to work. So if there's something you want me to try, if there's a new product coming out, um, if there's, I did try, um, the Simon Hurley's Luna paste this week. And I have to tell you, I resisted buying it because I didn't think I needed it. Who it is very much the same gold. If you own Inca gold, you own the same gold. It's literally the same color. However, the Luna paste spreads so much better so much easier and you get insane glitter it's not glittery it's shiny gold payoff it's it's the best i love it so it's fantastic now i am now just going through with the little bits that i've cut here and there and i'm just creating basically a vine going to from the bottom to the top and that's what I'm trying to create. I'm not trying to make them have symmetry. They're not supposed to look exactly the same. They're just all cut out. I did cut these butterflies out 
and they were in the green thing and I was gonna use some glossy accents or something like that on them but they really don't go I do have a couple of bees on here now obviously bees are yellow <laughs> so this is my homemade um, mica spray that I'm using I I'm doing splatters did everyone witness that I'm doing splatters if you're new to my channel I don't do splatters very well don't I'm not a splatter person I like my splatters and my dots to be exactly where I want them to be so it's a little bit haphazard for me to just sprinkle splatters everywhere so I did put some of those on there they were green and I am doing some journaling down the bottom here now I normally don't do my journaling I usually leave it till afterwards but I thought that it added balance to the page and it would make more sense if I put the the journaling here you would know why there's that space so sometimes I have had a couple of people say to me do you journal like where do you put the journaling on your pages um, sometimes I write it like this sometimes I print it on my printer and cut it into thin strips that I love that look as well um, I sometimes print just a whole line I remember last year I did a COVID-19 um, spread and it was over four or five pages and I printed that to put in there because handwriting all that was going to be insane it was just basically how we went with it now this is where I sort of zoom in and that's when I realize I have yellow bees they're not green so I go through and also the tips of these flowers actually have yellow dots obviously because it's pollen so I just went through with my green pen and made them green that way everything on the page is green so let me know what you think guys do you like the old monochromatic thing haven't we haven't seen much of that these days like there's not a lot of that going around so I thought I'd go back and investigate it and show you my take on what I would consider monotone a monotone layout so there monochromatic layout now if you're new to my channel here's my shameless plug please like subscribe leave me a comment all that stuff helps the algorithm share my page out there for other people that are maybe looking for scrapbooking and or paper craft art and different ideas you don't necessarily have to copy my entire page you might just find one thing and go hey i like how she did that and apply that to your own layout by liking subscribing and sharing my page it lets other people and the algorithm know that i'm here and I would sincerely appreciate it. And I love responding to your comments. So thanks for watching. I will chat to you again soon. Bye for now.